So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over some GCSE Maths past exam questions related to some more difficult community frequency diagram questions. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions that we go through in a link in the description and I'll also include some links to lessons that go over this topic in greater detail. Now as this is the second video that goes over some exam questions related to community frequency, what we'll do is we'll just go straight into the questions and if you're wanting to know further aspects of community frequencies then all you need to do is click on the links in the description or watch the previous video which covered this topic as well. So looking at question one it says Jess records the height of some students in this table. Complete the community frequency for this data and we've got our table here. So the first thing we need to do is to complete the table. So for this, all we're doing is doing a running total of the upper bound of each group. So here we're going to add the previous frequency to the community frequency value. So this is going to be 18 plus 6, which is 24, then 16 plus 24, which is 40, and then 40 plus 10, which is 50. Then for B, it then says come draw the community frequency curve. So what we need to do is start at 150, and then we're plotting the community frequency values at the upper bound of each of the groups. So here we're having 0 at 150, then at 160 we're going up to 6 which is there, then at 170 we're going to 24 which is there, then 180 at 40, that's an easier plot, and then 190 which is at 50. So all that's left for me to do is then to connect those points up with a nice smooth curve. So again I would just try your best to draw it as smoothly as possible and again doing it on paper is so much easier than doing it on the screen but I would say I'm quite happy with that. It then says estimate the number of students whose height is 165 or less. So for this what we need to do is find 165 which is here, I then draw a vertical line till it hits the community frequency curve and then as soon as it hits the curve I project horizontally to find the frequency. So here I make out that number to be roughly around about 15 but again they would allow any answer between 14 and let's say 16 as an answer but you definitely want to draw a line going up from 165 to wherever it hits your curve and then project horizontally and then it's whatever number there needs to be written. But like I said, what they've suggested on the official mark scheme is an answer between 14 and 16 would be acceptable. Moving on to question two, it says the community frequency graph shows the test marks out of 80 for 50 children and for part A it says, oh no, there is no part A. I think they've just got an error there because I'm trying to look for a question. 2B, it says, estimate the median mark. So here we need to find the median mark. Well, the median is half the total frequency, which is 50. So 50 divided by 2 equals 25. So 25 is here. So what I need to do is draw a horizontal line, and this represents the median line. And then as soon as it hits the curve, I then need to draw a line going down and reading this value here, which I make out to be roughly around about 51. Now, in the mark scheme, they would accept any answer around 50.5 to 51.5. And again, that should be relatively close, simply because the community frequency curve has been drawn for everyone and should be set a standard. Then for question 2c it says estimate the interquartile range. So for this what we need to do is first of all find our lower quartile mark. So half of 25, so we do 50 divided by 4 which is 12.5. So I find 12.5 which is here. I then go across and again yours should be drawn with a ruler and then project down. So I make out that this number here which is my lower quartile, is going to be roughly around about 48. Then if I then do the same for the upper quartile, well the upper quartile is going to be 3 quarters times the total frequency which is 50 and that is going to be what 37.5. So I find 37.5 which is here 
and then as soon as it hits the curve I project downwards and I make that value to be drawn accurately around about 55 and again excuse the wonkiness of my line let me just correct that that's roughly there so it is 55 so then the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile so it's going to be 55 minus 48 in which I get an answer of 7. Now in the mark scheme they would accept any answer between 5.5 and 8 for the interquartile range. Then moving on to question 3 it says the table shows information about distance traveled to make 500 deliveries and it says complete the community frequency for this data. So again completing the table we should have the numbers of 300 then 125 plus 300 which is 425 and then 75 plus 425 which is 500. Then it says we need to plot or represent this in a community frequency graph. So again you just need to plot those points. So again it starts at 0 so that's where 0 is going to be. Then at 10 it's at 0 as well. Then at 40 it's at 60 which is going to be there. At 60 it's 300 which is there. At 80, it's at 4 to 5, which is in between 400 and 450. And at 100, it's going to be at 500. So it's going to be there. So again, all that's left for me to do is then join those points up with a relatively smooth curve. But again, just make sure that your point, your line and your curve does go through each of the points that you've plotted. And again, hopefully yours is definitely going to be a lot smoother than that. Then for 3C, it says estimate how many deliveries were more than 40, 75 miles. So what we need to then do is find 75, which is here. So then if I draw a line going up from 75, and again, it does need to be straight. And then as soon as it hits the curve, you're then projecting across. So for B, I make that number to be 390. Just label this as uh, C rather, I don't know why I've written B. I make it up to be 390, but the question is saying how many more were more, sorry, how many were more than 75? So it's going to be 300, uh, 500 minus 390, which equals 110. Then for D, it says deliveries under X miles are free. 50 of the deliveries were free. Use your graph to estimate X. So I'm looking for the first 50 deliveries, which is here. So that if I draw a line going from 50, and I'm just label this as D, then as soon as it hits the curve, I'm then projecting downwards. So for D, I reckon that's round about 36, 38 would be fine as a final answer. Then for question E, it says that the manager makes a comment about the deliveries. He says that more than half the deliveries are less than 50 miles. Is he correct? Show your work and support the answer. So 50 delivery or 50 miles, I should say, is along this point here. So then from there, if I then project across, then I make this out, and if I just reference this as part E, I make out that value to be roughly around about 175, 180. I would say 175 is probably about right. And again, but you're reading whatever number that is for you and your graph. Now, for me, looking at the working out, that less than, so there were 175 that were or deliveries I should say so deliveries less than 50 miles away and 175 is not more 
then half of 500. So the answer then is going to be a residing no. Moving on to question four, it says community frequency graph shows the time taken by 100 university students to solve a mathematical puzzle. And it says work out the median time. Well, the total frequency is 100. So it's going to be 100 divided by 2, which is 50. So from draw a, a horizontal line from 50 till it hits the curve. And then I'm projecting downwards. And I make that out to be roughly around about 38. Now in the mark scheme, they would accept any answer between 37 and 39. Then for B, it says work out the interquartile range. So again, half of 50 is 25. So I'm finding 25. And this is the inter the lower quartile. And I make out that value to be at 30. So the lower quartile is 30. Then for the upper quartile, that's going to be at 75. So that's here, so the upper quartile. And I make that value to be roughly around about 46. So the upper quartile is 46. So all that's left for me to then do is take away those two numbers. So the interquartile range is going to be 46 minus 30 which gives me an answer of 16. For one mark, I think that's pretty stingy, but again, it's not my test paper. Then for C, it then says that 100 school students were asked to solve the same puzzle. The table shows their results. We know the median and the interquartile range, and the question is asking us to compare the results of the university and the high school students. So here, we want to make one comment about the average and then one comment about the spread or the consistency. So from this, we can then say that on average, university students were quicker solving the puzzle as their median time was smaller and again comparing the two values we've got the interquartile range uh, sorry the median for the un, uh, for the school the university students was 38 seconds for the school it was 48 so 38 is smaller than 48 so there's a bit of mathematical proof then we need to comment on the spread so we're comparing the interquartile range so we can then say however the school children students times were more consistent as their IQR was smaller. And again, if you want to quote the numbers, we've got 16 against 12, and we can just say 12 is less than 16. So something along those lines will be good enough to get those two marks. Then moving on to question five, it says Raj records the weights of some pumpkins in his ta in this table. Complete the community the community frequency for this data. So again, completing the table, we've got eight eight plus eighteen is twenty six. Then we've got forty six. Then we've got fifty five, and then we've got sixty. So again, plotting the values, we've got we're starting at zero. So not one point five. It's zero at 2 it's at 8 which is there at 2.5 it's at 26 which is about there at 3 it's at 46 which is about there at 3.5 it's at 55 and that is there and then at four, it's at 60, which is there. So all that's left for me to then do is join those points up as best that I can. So again, now if you wanted to, you could use a ruler and then smooth off the edges. If that, you find that easier, that's absolutely fine. But because it says a curve, we do need to join them up with a curve. I think that's pretty much the best I'm gonna be able to do. It then says, how many pumpkins did, weigh, uh, did he weigh in total? So here we look for the total frequency. So it's going to be 60. So this 
is basically the total frequency, which is 60. For D, it says what proportion of the pumpkins weighed more than 3.2 kilograms? So if I then find 3.2 on my horizontal scale, so 3.2 is there. And if I, it's one box in from that one there. So if I draw my vertical line and then project across. So we're looking for the portion. I make out that value to be around about 49. And again, yours might be different based on the value that you've picked. So it says weighed more than 3.2. So I need to then do 60 minus 49, which is 11. So it says what proportion? Well, it's going to be 11 over 60. And so I either can write 11 over 60 or I can convert it as a decimal. So whatever number you've got here, we need to take it away from 60. And in terms of, sorry, whatever number we got from our graph here, we take this away from 60 and then divide it by 60. So here I've got 11 over 60. Yours might be slightly different. If you want to write it as a decimal, then let's just quickly do that on the calculator. So we've got 11 divided by 60, which gives me 0 0.0.183. One eight three recurring, and again, as a proportion, you can either give us a decimal percentage or a fraction. Then, moving on to question five, it says pumpkins that weighed two kilograms or less were sold for 99p. Pumpkins that weighed two kilograms or less, uh, but less than three kilograms, was one pound fifty, and pumpkins that weighed more than three kilograms were sold for two pound twenty five. Raj sold all his pumpkins. How many? How much money did he take? So here we're looking for two kilograms. So two kilograms is here. And if I look at that, I make out that value to be roughly around eight. So eight were two kg or less. Then I'm looking for how many were up between two and three. So three kilograms is roughly around about there. So we then need to do that and I roughly get that to be what about 46 yeah so then between 2 and 3 kg it's going to be 46 minus 8 because I'm looking for this range here then that's going to give me an answer of what 38 so then for three kilograms plus well we know that how many were between less than three was 46 so it's going to be 60 minus 46 which is 14 so there i've got all my quantities of those three amounts so then going back and just writing down those quantities so i've got eight I've got 38 and I've got 14. So then working out the cost, I've got eight times 0 0.99. I've then got 38 times one pound 50. And then I've got 14 times two pound 25. Now, if I work out each of those individual amounts, so eight times 0 0.99 is seven pound 92. I then work out what 38 times 1.5 is, which is 57 pounds. And then 14 times 2 pound 25 gives me an answer of 31 pound and 50 pence. So all that's left for me to do is add those three amounts in which I get final answer of 96 pounds and 42 pence. And that concludes the end of this community frequency topic test.